Hey everyone, we're back here in the shop to talk about the Dark Arrow 1. This is an aircraft we've designed for high speed, long range flight. And right here in front of me, I have the main landing gear for the Dark Arrow 1. There's a lot to take in, so why don't we just start with how we built each strut and we'll go from there. We're looking at all the pieces for the strut assembly. This is all staged and we're preparing to bond it together. We've had the bond areas masked off and solvent wiped the bond areas and we're basically ready to apply adhesive but there's a lot going on with these struts internally and I want to talk through that. We're looking at the two strut halves here. There are a couple strips of carbon fiber that sit both internally and externally over that seam so that uh, they form lap joints so that we can structurally tie these two halves together. And there are two metallic components that we're bonding to the strut. This is the trunnion. Sits at the top of the strut like this and gets bonded and then bolted into the strut. You can see these holes here for the bolts. And then the strut bottom, another machine component, gets joined to the bottom of the strut like this. Again, it's bonded and bolted. You can see the bolt holes there. Anywhere there's a bolt hole, we send a fiberglass tube to the bolt holes so that we're electrically isolating the metallic component from the carbon fiber. The reason we do that is there's a phenomenon called galvanic corrosion that can occur. We did a whole video about that. If you want to learn more about that, I'll link it up above so you can check that out. We also apply a layer of fiberglass on the bond area to form an, uh, an insulating barrier between the metallic component and the carbon fiber strut. So all these bond areas have fiberglass in them. One way we check that is with a, an ohmmeter. You can just check for conductivity to ensure that it's not conducting between the metal and the carbon. So we'll check this along the way as we're bonding these together. Just keep touching between the carbon and the metal to double check that. And then there's another piece that's not bonded. It's just bolted to the strut in the middle of the strut. This is called the strut bracket and it's held in place mechanically fastened with a couple large bolts. We had to match drill some holes for those running through here and the holes had to be perfectly aligned. The way we achieved that was with a drill fixture. So this was a, a scrapped strut bracket that we had but we were able to repurpose it as a drill fixture so we could clamp this on the strut and then drill holes through so they were perfectly aligned and matched up with the strut. We didn't want to have any misalignment otherwise this thing's not going to go together and it's not going to assemble properly and it's not going to transfer loads if it was misaligned. There are a couple of changes that we want to make to this for production. We designed this whole thing in the CAD world but then when you get into the process of actually bonding it together, assembling it and clamping it up uh, you have all sorts of ideas for how to improve that so we're already working through the changes we're going to make for production to make this a little bit easier. One thing we do have though to make this easy at least on the prototype stage we have this assembly fixture that we built up and what this does is it ensures we have proper alignment between the, the trunnion, the strut, and the strut bottom right here. So we'll assemble this whole thing in the fixture and make sure that's aligned. We don't want these cocked at some weird angle. Uh, these parts have some interesting aspects to them. They were kind of tricky to machine, but we were able to make them in-house on our Tormach. Keegan was the mastermind behind that, so I'll let him talk through that. As Riley mentioned, there's a couple of machining challenges that come along with making components like this. Right off the bat, you can see that there's some deep pockets and some thin walled features. When you have a thin walled feature, that wall wants to move on you and it wants to flex, so work holding can be a challenge. When you're trying to get a tool down there and you have a lot of tool stick out, that tool will want to flex on you and it'll want to cause uh, basically a lower dimensionally accurate part. So in addition to that, we have some holes that need to be concentric relative to one another. We actually bought a special end mill that's long enough to mill both this hole and this hole at the same time and get those holes really well aligned to one another. Similar kind of story on this bore down here on our strut bottom. We need the same diameter from top to bottom. There are bushings that are going in here. So some challenges that we overcame from a machining perspective, but we're really happy with how they turned out. We're going to graduate from a simple three axis mill for prototyping to a more powerful and more capable mill for production, but we'll save that for another video. One last thing I want to note about this trunnion, we actually had a design for a composite version of this. We covered that in a separate video for our community. 
We'll leave a link in the description down below if you're interested in seeing the in-depth discussion on that. I think it's pretty interesting, so check that out. Uh, otherwise, I think we're gonna get back to assembly these into the strut, so let's go check that out. You saw how we built the gear struts. You saw how we assembled this whole thing. Now let's talk about the full assembly. There are a lot of parts here. I want to talk about the nomenclature or what everything is so that we're all on the same page. Got the wheel and brake here, which is attached to the trailing link. You have the shock here, the gear strut, the strut bracket, the drag link. There's a lower and an upper drag link and a drag link mount. The trunnion sits at the top of the strut and then we have the trunnion frame. You've already seen probably this component of the trunnion frame. If you pay attention to our channel, we did a whole long video on how we made this. What you haven't seen is these two components, which are the inner trunnion frame. There's a left and a right half. We made these on a mold that we machined out and then we infused those parts. If you're interested in more in making carbon fiber components, we actually teach an aerospace composites course where we go more in depth on this. We go all the way through theory and have a number of hands-on demos so you can get your hands dirty working with carbon fiber. If you're interested in that, check out the link in the description of this video. Anyway, back to the whole assembly here. Uh, these have to retract back up into the trunnion frame. So the trunnion frame kind of forms part of the wheel well, or at least the well for the struts. Those pass like this. And when they fold back, the gear have to collapse and fit up into the fuselage. The fuselage tapers in this area, so they're fitting into kind of a constricting area. We have less room to work with once they're back here. The actual retract mechanism is accomplished through uh, electric drives. So there's a, a gearbox and an electric motor on each strut in this area and that interfaces with the strut through a large spur gear. We haven't built that up, it's not installed yet, uh, but we'll get that uh, in a future video. Uh, they also have an emergency extend mechanism that's driven down through a gas spring. The whole mechanism here is actually very similar to what we did on the nose gear. Another thing I should mention, this is all assembled right now with uh, just temporary fasteners so that we can get this together to show what it looks like as a full assembly. Now that we have this built up, we're ready to start fitting it up into the fuselage. And I want to talk about how this whole thing interfaces with the fuselage. Let's jump over here to look at that. We're situated underneath the fuselage of the Dark Arrow 1 prototype. And we have the trunnion frame fitted up into the aft portion of the fuselage. So the bottom skin is not installed right now. We can see up inside here and we can get access to work. This is just rough fitted up right now. We have clamps holding it in place as well as a couple Clecos. The Inboard trending frames, the left and right halves are right here, and then the main portion of the trending frame is here. The landing gear struts would attach here and stick out kind of down and forward at an angle, and then they would retract back up into here, and then your main gear wheel well, basically where the wheel would retract, is up into here. There's more structure that we're going to add, uh, another bulkhead or two here, and then uh, some longitudinal or lengthwise bulkheads will get added to somewhat reinforce this, and then the bottom skin of the fuselage will get bonded in here to tie it all together and then we'll make some cutouts for the struts where the, the leg retracts up in here and then gear doors will close those openings out when the when the gear retracted. We had to make a couple of modifications to these bulkheads to fit this up when we originally built up the fuselage we hadn't uh, got the gear to this stage of the design we knew we were going to tweak and change some things so we just left these bulkheads basically solid and then we said, well, later we'll come back and then make the necessary cutouts for the gear struts when we have that to the final version. So that was a little piece of work that I did, uh, crawling up under here and making the cutouts, laying out all the dimensions for the cuts and then trimming it and sanding it to final dimension. Now that those cutouts are made, we can get this fitted up here. Going forward, we'll be able to bond this in after we're all satisfied with how everything fits up with this.
All right, guys, thanks for watching. We're gonna work on getting this thing fitted up into the fuselage, but we'll save that for the next video. We'll catch you guys next time.